In this video, we're going to look at projectiles that are fired horizontally. The first question we need to ask is whether the horizontal velocity given to the projectile affects its downward motion. To answer this question, we're going to shoot a small steel ball at the exact moment that a second steel ball is dropped. Let's see what happens. Let's go back and look at that again. So, they hit the ground at the same time, which means the forward velocity given to the projectile does not affect its vertical motion, or how it falls. We call this the independence of x and y motion. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have a frictionless car with a ball launcher on top. It's going to shoot a ball straight up in the air. Notice how the upward velocity given to the ball was not affected by the forward motion of the car. So this is another example of the independence of x and y motion. So the first person to really notice that horizontal motion does not affect vertical motion was Galileo, who in the 1600s um, proposed that objects moving left to right when they're falling move with constant velocity to the left or to the right. Um, he suggested a, a ball rolling off a table. When a ball is moving forward with some velocity and it rolls off the edge of the table, that forward velocity is not affected by gravity because gravity pulls down, not to the right or to the left. So we have a constant velocity equation that we can use that we're familiar with, where the position is equal to the average velocity times time plus the initial x position. Because this is a forward velocity, though, um, it's going to be a lot easier for us to just call this average velocity vx. So I'm going to write that vx times t plus x naught. Uh, and usually that horizontal velocity is going to be given to you in a problem. Galileo then suggested that once the ball has rolled off the edge of the table and it's moving with its forward constant velocity, it then begins to gain downward velocity because gravity pulls down and speeds the object up. So our y motion is accelerating due to gravity. This means that we can use any of our freefall motion equations where an object is speeding up um, at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. Now I'm going to change some of my letters so that I, I'm making sure to note that these are y, not x variables. So we'll start with velocity. Instead of saying v, I'm going to say vy, because only the y component of velocity is affected. So vy equals negative gt plus vy naught, which would be the initial downward velocity. The y position would be equal to negative 1 half gt squared plus, normally we would write v naught t, but now we're writing v y naught times t plus the initial height. And our ain't got no time equation would now be for the y velocity. Um, so v y squared equals negative 2g uh, delta y plus v y naught squared. So somewhere you should write down these equations. For the y or the up and down motion, we can use these three equations. And for the x motion, there is only this one equation needed. All right, let's, let's do a problem. An airplane traveling east going 120 meters per second drops a package from an altitude of 5,000 meters. How long does it take the package to reach the ground, and how far did it go? Okay, so let's start by drawing a little picture of what's going on. Here we have a plane. Woo! And the, pain, the plane drops a package. So here's the package. Now, the first thing that I should note um, is that if the package is on the plane, and the plane is going 120 meters a second, then that is actually telling me that the package is also going 120 meters a second. And we would say that that is our vx, because it's a horizontal velocity. And I would write vx equals 120 meters per second. Now, the drop, the fact that it is dropped, means that it initially does not have any downward velocity. 
So that drop tells me that my v y naught, my initial y velocity, downward component of velocity, is zero. Okay, good. Now let's talk about um, this altitude, from an altitude of 5,000 meters. Well, if I draw the ground, there's the ground. I could say that y, the final position of the package, is zero. And the initial height is 5,000 meters. Okay. How long does it take the package to reach the ground? That's asking me to figure out time. How much time does it take? And of course, the y motion is affected by g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, as long as we're near the surface of the Earth, which 5,000 meters is is far away, but it's near enough that we can still use 9.8 for the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so I have in the y motion category, v y naught, t, 9.8, y, and y naught. So what I might do to try and organize all of this information uh, is I might make a little x and y box. I'm going to put all of this y stuff in the y side and all the x stuff on the x side. So for x I have 120 meters a second and for y I've got the initial y naught is 0. The initial height is 5,000. Sorry, 5,000. Final is 0, g is 9.8, and I want to find t. Now t is something that actually goes in both sides because time has a shared parameter between the x and the y motion. Um, so how I'm going to find time? Well, I will look at all of my y information, which I've nice and neatly organized into my y column, and then I'll think, what is an equation that I can use? from my y chart that I wrote down earlier um, that has all of that stuff in it. So I need something that has y, y naught, v y naught, t, and g, which is this equation. So I'm going to write that equation down on my y chart. y equals negative one half g t squared plus v y naught t plus y naught because why not? Okay, now I start getting rid of anything that is zero. I know that the final height is zero, so that goes away. And I know that the initial velocity is zero, so that goes away. And what I'm left with is zero equals negative one-half gt squared plus y naught, which if I add one-half gt squared to both sides, I get one-half gt squared equals y naught. And to solve for t, I would multiply both sides by 2. And that would get rid of the 1 half. Then I would divide both sides by g, which would get rid of the g. Okay, so now I have t squared equals 2y naught times g. So t is the square root of 2y naught over g. Okay, so I'll plug in those numbers the square root of 2 times 5,000 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And I'm going to get 31.94. So let's call that 32.0 seconds. 32 seconds. Okay, so that's the first thing that it asked us to find. How long does it take to reach the ground? Um, which, if I was going to draw the path of this projectile, it's going to be moving forward and going down. So it actually will have a little bit of a parabola, half a parabola. And boom, right before it hits the ground, this will happen at 32 seconds. Okay, so now let's work on part two. How far forward did it go? Well, in this case... 
I can use that 32 seconds in my X side of the chart because I know that it's going to be in the air going 120 meters a second for 32 seconds. So now if I say let's make our initial position X 0 and then write X equals question mark to try and figure out how far forward it goes. So I would write that on my X chart X equals 0 meters. I want to find X. Now I look at my X column for my equations and, and try and think about what equation to use. <laughs> just kidding. There's only one equation to use. So I just use that one equation. And if I use that one equation, X equals VXT plus X naught, um, I can get rid of the initial position because it's zero, so that goes away. And now finding the X, how far it goes, I just take my 120 and multiply it by 32. So 120 meters per second times 32 seconds, the seconds are going to cancel, is going to give me 3,840. So 3,840 meters is how far forward the package lands. Okay, so again, what we've done is used the independence of horizontal or X motion from vertical or Y motion to get equations that we can use for X and for Y. To help us organize everything, we wrote this chart and we kept all of our Y work on the Y side and the X work on the left side. The big important idea is that time is a shared variable between X and Y. That's the link between the horizontal and the vertical motion. Also, you're super cool and awesome and wicked smart and you just did a lot of physics. Congratulations, this video is over.